Grace Dike, the Director of Modesty Financial Consultants Limited, based in Luton, United Kingdom, offering mortgages, mortgage advice, financial advice, and investment analysis and financial consulting to our clients in the UK and beyond. Okay, today we're going to be continuing on um, the series. We're going to be continuing on the series that we started last week, which was um, talking about personal and family protection fundamentals. So this is the second part in the series. And last week we uh, just focused on the basics of uh, life protection, what it means, what to expect, why we should, um, you know, give it a serious thought and, you know, just laying the foundation basically on what um, life insurance offers us and why we should seriously consider it. But that's not all. Today I, I'm going to go deeper into explaining um, more technical terms and the uh, different types of life and personal protection and uh, the way they work, the operational realities of those uh, policies, what to expect and everything. So we're going to go into a little bit more detail today. But just a little bit of warning to say that um, the things I'm going to explain here, the things I'm going to discuss here today, they are not exhaustive in terms of what life and family protect, uh, personal and family protection entails. But they are just what I consider to be basics that we need to know. And we ought to know that there, there is a lot more to um, life and family protection to than more I'm going to be discussing today. There's a lot more to it than what I'm going to be discussing today. But at least this is just to get you started and to, you know, enlighten you and highlight some of the major and basic things that you need to be looking at. Okay, so um, going straight into uh, the discussion for today, I just wanted to use this opportunity to first of all draw, um, you know, a line between life insurance and life assurance. You know, it's it's been a confusing term for some people who basically want to understand why is it that some people use the term life insurance and some use the term life assurance. Now, uh, first thing you need to understand is that insurance is a contract of indemnity. So insurance indemnifies. And especially when you are insuring things that are not life or non-life insurance, which is, which is generally called general insurance, Things like your car, your house, you know, the contents insurance, and you know, um, other things that are non-living things. They are called general insurance. In that situation, where you insure things like that, the indemnity, uh, the indemnity contract you have with the insurance company is that if you suffer any kind of loss or any kind of risk occurring, the risk of flooding occurring in your house, the contract of the insurance company is to put you back. In the financial situation you were in prior to the to that event or that risk occurring that is the contract of indemnity that you have that's why it's an insurance is a contract of indemnity but when you compare that to life you cannot restore life so when a life is lost there is no way you can restore that person back to life the situation they were in prior to the loss of that so the only thing you can do is to pay some kind of compensation to the beneficiaries of that person if it results into life, um, lot to loss of life. Or if somebody sustained an injury, you cannot really bring that person back to the state they were in. If the person has to spend the rest of their lives on a wheelchair, you cannot restore that person back to what they were prior to um, life on a wheelchair. If the person is suffering from a terminal illness, the payment you're making or the insurance cannot restore that person back to the situation they were in prior to that you know, event occurring. So it makes life insurance dif different from general insurance, So, which is why some um, professionals prefer using the term assurance, yeah? which means that they are not insuring you in terms of uh, that contract of restoring you back to the financial situation you were in it's an assurance in the sense that the money is meant to assuage or just uh, soften the impact of the um, the loss or the risk or the event that occurred so when your beneficiaries receive a payout from the insurance company 
they are just receiving that payment just to cushion the effects of maybe your injury, your illness, or even your death. That's what that is meant to be. Or you might even be the beneficiary yourself if you're still alive, you know, and you suffered that injury. That payment is maybe to make life a little bit more comfortable for you while you are still alive. While they cannot restore you back to what you were prior to that, the payment will just go, you know, a long way in making life um, comfortable for you a little bit. Now, to, to now go down into the nitty gritty of that. Now, why some people now use the term assurance is there are certain types of um, life uh, policies that have investment elements in them. So that investment element that it has in them now has an assurance, which means that when you invest, you receive bonuses. And that bonus you receive increases the value of your policy. So it has a life assurance and an investment package all brought together. In the event of death, the total value of that policy will be paid to you, including the sum assured, which was the original amount agreed, you know, at the, from the very onset. If the sum assured is, for example, 500,000, it means the value of that insurance policy is 500,000. But then you agree to pay a certain amount, maybe every month into that policy. And because it has got investment elements, that amount you pay, some part of it will be taken as payment towards your life assurance and the other part invested. Now that you receive quarterly or uh, periodic bonuses, which will increase the value of that. If that policy was for 25 years and the, the investment element is still there and then the sum assured is 500,000 pounds. If anything, if you die before the 25 years, the total value of that policy, which is the £500,000 plus the value of the investment element added together, will pay to you. Okay? If you outlive the 25 years, the total value of that investment plus your £500,000 life cover will pay to you all in full. Yeah? That is what uh, some people see as assurance. And that's why some life insurance companies only refer to that part as life assurance because there is an assurance of payment whether you are dead or you are alive no matter what happens there is some kind of payment coming to you if you outlive that um, policy term you get paid if you die before the policy term your beneficiaries get paid yeah if you withdraw or cancel the policy you get some kind of payment less the penalties and the deductions you not get your full value because you did not honor the contract so as long as you met the minimum requirement you get some kind of payment but there will be huge penalties and deductions which means you will not be getting the full amount you put into it so that's part of um, life business is is what they refer to as life assurance just in some um, in some areas of insurance they call it assurance because you get paid something but then compare it to the pure life insurance where if you die before the policy term expires and you, you are paying your premium, your beneficiaries get paid, you know, um, the sum assured on that policy. But if you do not die and you have leave the policy term, say for 25 years and you live more than 25 years, everything you paid in there, you know, um, the policy is void or it lapses because the risk not of course a pure life insurance. So they just call that insurance. So that's how some life companies try to differentiate between life insurance and life assurance. But the truth of the matter is that this is just a matter of semantics. Okay? Some life insurance companies prefer to call themselves life assurance companies simply because they believe you cannot restore life. Now what they now do is that they are individual life products. They now explain to you what you are buying in the key facts documents. You get an explanation of what you are buying, whether that policy has investment elements in it or not. You do not get to whether you are buying a pure life policy or a life policy with investment elements. So they don't really want to bother themselves about whether they are being called life insurance or life assurance. As long as every individual who buys a policy understands what they are buying via the key facts document that they get. So you now know whether that policy, that package you're buying suits or meets your needs or your requirements.
So that's why I just wanted to clear that for us to understand the difference between life insurance and life assurance. Some policies with investment element prefer to be referred to as life as assurance products or assurance companies because there's an assurance of payment irrespective of the outcome of life or death. But the insurance part of it, you know, is when you insure and it's only paid out upon the risk of death occurring. And that's when they call themselves life insurance. But these days, whether they are called life assurance or life insurance, they all perform the same role. But then the product designs are different. Make sure you understand the product you are buying and that it satisfies your needs and your requirements before you sign up to them. So that that's, it's just for us to understand the difference between, you know, insurance and assurance. So when you see life assurance companies, you understand why they did, why they prefer to call themselves life assurance companies. It's just a matter of preference. In the, in the professional uh, circle, whether it's insurance or assurance, it doesn't matter. It is the same thing that they offer, but the different, pa the product packaging is different. Okay. So let's look at different types of uh, life and personal, uh, personal and family protection. I'm just going to focus on three main types. The first one I'm going to be looking at here is life insurance. Okay, so I'm going to be referring to pure life insurance. I'm not going to be focusing on the life uh, insurance package with investment elements. That's a different thing for another day. But I want to focus on pure life insurance. Pure life insurance policy is the simple life insurance policy that you pay your premium every month, every quarter, or whatever period, whatever um, periodic uh, payment you agree to. You pay your premium, and your beneficiaries get paid the sum assured upon death. So it's only redeemable upon death. If anything happens, if you die before the time that's agreed then your beneficiaries get paid some. So it is very, very useful for having a peace of mind to know that when you are no longer there, things still have to be taken care of. You know, the mortgages still have to be paid, the rent still have to be paid, your children will still have to go to school. You know, life carries on with your family and nobody has to worry about your burial costs and all the rest of them. You know, everybody around you will mourn you, but they, will have, they won't have to mourn the loss in terms of financial uh, implication and financial impact. It will not be an extra burden on them, you know, financially. So it's a pure life insurance policy which thrives on you keeping your own side of the contract, which is paying your premium, and then disclosing fully to the insurance company before you sign up to the insurance. You have to be honest. So because life insurance contracts are based on honesty, it's assumed that both parties are being honest to each other. Because if you're not honest with life insurance and they offer you a life but based on the information you're giving to them and the medical uh, information you're giving to them, then that's it. If anything happens to you and upon investigation, they realize that something else happened and you did not disclose something to them, they will not pay out. And that's why people have problems with life insurance companies a lot of the times. They say that life insurance companies are coming in, they don't pay out, they don't pay claims. Yeah, there are some out there who are dodgy. But in most cases, you realize that it's lack of disclosure. When you did not disclose the full information about yourself, whether you're a smoker, whether you have suffered some kind of um, illness before, whether there's a, you know, a history of certain type of illness in your family, and you don't make that full disclosure, it becomes a problem. Now, like this pure life insurance can be arranged on level term, on increasing term, and on decreasing term. Now, level term means your premium will remain the same throughout the period of the life insurance policy. So if you're paying, say, £10 for the life cover, it remains £10 for the 30 years you have arranged it for. Now, if you arrange a life cover on, a, on an increasing term, it means that every year that, that premium may have to be increasing, depending on how you choose to increase it. Some increments are based on, you know, uh, certain in indices, say um, inflation level, if you want your your life cover to be increasing by the level of inflation every year, just to make sure that whenever anything happens, the value of money at that time will still be enough to pay and to take care of the lifestyle of your family and your beneficiaries at that time, it's up to you. So if, for example, the inflation increases by 
uh, by 2%. It means you are telling the insurance company to increase your life cover by 2% and your premium will go up as well because of that extra life cover. So it means that in the, in the next 10 years, if for example, the person dies in 10 years time, the value of money at that time matches the level of inflation, which means the value of money at that time can buy the same quantity of goods that are bought like 10 years ago. It's increasing at the same pace as inflation. You can also choose by what percentage you want it to be going up every year. You can tell the life cover to be increasing the life cover by uh, the life um, cover amount by 2% every year. And every year it grows up by 2% your premium growth. So it keeps it keeps increasing and then your premium keeps increasing. There's also a decreasing term assurance, which means as the year goes by, you know, the value of the life cover keeps decreasing, but your premium remains level. This is mostly used for mortgage protection. If you arrange a life cover that most that just covers your mortgage, if your mortgage is two hundred thousand pounds, you take your life cover of two hundred thousand pounds on a decreasing term basis. So as you pay down your mortgage, the value of the life cover reduces, but your premium remains the same, which means that all you're interested in is making sure that it pays your life cover for your mortgage whenever you are no longer there, right? Because that's, that's the decreasing term um, assurance. Now, not like I earlier said, not every life insurance policy has an investment element. So it's a pure life cover I'm talking about here. When you stop paying your premium, the policy lapses. You know, some insurance companies just say if you, if you haven't paid premium for three months, then that's it, automatic lapse of insurance. The policy, the insurance company will make contact with you to say, hey, you know, we've not been able to, we've not received your premium payment for this month. What's going on? Maybe a problem with your direct debit or with your bank, you sub that out and the premium, com the policy comes back to life. But if after three months they are not receiving anything from you, you know, some policies will just lapse automatically. And if you don't pay your premium, it simply means that you're not covered because that's your own part of the, a deal. So if you if you don't pay your premium, it means you're not covered. If anything happens to you at that time and you're not up to date with your premium, the insurance company has a right, you know, not to pay out unless you have taken out what we call waiver of premium. And that waiver of premium has to be built into your policy from day one. And there are conditions attached to it. If you meet that those conditions, they can waive your premium if those circumstances are met and those conditions are met. Now, so, something very important, you know, some people arrange a joint policy. Maybe you are married, you and your wife, you take out a joint policy. You know, um, now, my personal opinion on this would be if, if you have a spouse and you want to take out policy, you know, consider, consider taking out the policy individually. Yeah? Consider taking out two separate policies. You know, I've done this with uh, a couple of uh, my clients, and I've done that quote for a couple of my clients who are married. And, I, you know, I've noticed that the difference between the joint policy premium and taking the policies individually, the individual policy between you and your spouse, it's very, very insignificant. Okay? Say, for example, um, I, just did a, I just did a quote for a couple uh, last week. And I did a quote, a joint policy quote for them, and I did a quote for individual policies. And then I realized that the difference between the premium they were paying on a joint policy and what they were paying individually put together is just about nine pounds. And for that difference of nine pounds, they are getting twice the amount of cover in that household that they would have got if they took out a joint policy. So their joint policies, their joint policy cost them, uh, I think it was about 61 pounds for a life and critical illness cover of 250,000 pounds, right? But then I did the same policy, 250,000 pounds life and critical illness quotes for individual, um, clients, for individual business for those, for that couple. And when I, when you add both, uh, figures together, it gives you 69 pounds. But in that household, there is 500,000 pounds worth of cover. So for twice 
the amount of cover, nine pounds, just about eight pounds difference compared to when they did it, you know, um, together. So, and it means that each person carries their own policy. So if one person dies, it doesn't affect the policy of the other person because it's a, they are individual policies. So that other person, if it's an individual policy, their policy doesn't lapse because this person has died. And if they are beneficiary, it doesn't affect their beneficiary status either. Then, if they are joint policy, if they are joint policy holders, and one person dies, the policy lapses. The company pays out, and that's it. The surviving partner will have to arrange a different policy for himself or herself. Yeah, the policy partner will have to arrange a different policy for himself or herself, and. Considering the fact that, you know, uh, you have to look at when this person died. If this person died at a very advanced age, maybe close to the expiration of the policy term, and the surviving partner, uh, you know, is really advanced in age, it will be difficult to arrange a suitable policy on their own at that time. It might be very expensive because of their age. So if they've grown older, by the time this one partner died and it's leaving one surviving partner, it will be much more expensive for that surviving partner to arrange a policy on their own it, to satisfy, the, to get the same level of cover that they had, you know, um, years back when they arranged their joint policy. So as a couple, you know, consider taking out individual policies because if you look at the costs, you know, of the um, policy, bring it together, the difference is really insignificant. I have done quotes in the past as well where I've seen the difference just being say three or four pounds a pound because the both um, uh, couple are very young, you know, and they, they, none of them was actually older than each other. But the one I did last week, one couple was older than the other. So obviously and um, apparently the premium for the older person was higher than the premium for the one who was younger, which is also the other advantage of that. If there is age difference in that, the younger couple, the younger member of that couple will get a cheaper life insurance and will get more cover for less premium because of their age. So you'll be able to take advantage of the age um, benefits if you are the younger member of that couple because you are taking individual policies. But if you want to, if you take joint policies, you will not be able to take advantage of that age benefit because the insurance company will have to, you know, weigh the risk as a joint policy holder based on who is older and based on the risk posed by the older couple. That's how you get the quote from the insurance company. But then if you separate those policies and each person takes you know their own policies separately, so the underwriting process <coughs> excuse me. The underwriting the underwriting process will be based on individual risks, which is based on your age, your gender and all that. So that's basically the way I see it. And you know, uh, couples looking to take a uh, life insurance should also consider that. And then, you know, just to add this, and it's not really one of my major key, but one thing that is a reality in the world we live in today is the rates of divorce and the rate of separation, you know, which um, is on the increase um, by the year. So in the event of, you know, couples deciding not to, you know, do this thing again, they are going their separate ways. Each person can walk away with their own life policies. Except you want to make changes to it or you want to make tweaks to it, it's up to you. But then if things don't work out between the couples, they can decide to walk away with their individual policies, you know, without having to go through the process of cancelling the existing policies and making so it's a separate policy and you can decide to do whatever you want to do with it. So and now um the young, for life insurance, yeah, I've had people say, Oh, if, you mean I should be paying this money to life insurance companies and if nothing happens to me, you know, the life insurance company takes all the money and then I will, I will be left empty handed. 
Now, for pure life insurance policies, that is exactly what it is. What you are paying is for protection in the event of death. Yeah? So you pay your premium. In the event of death, the insurance company pays out the agreed sum. The agreed sum is called sum assured. Yeah? If you agree to insure your life for £300,000, for example, that is the sum assured. And that's, they will now work out a premium that will be equivalent to the risk that you pose. Now, some of the things that the company, that the life insurance company considers, are the factors they consider in underwriting that risk and agreeing to accept you or to reject that proposal are things like your age, they will consider your gender, they will consider your occupation, they will consider your medical history, you know, they will um, consider whether you are a smoker or not, your lifestyle and all that. For example, if you are involved in any kind of sport that's risky, maybe you do skiing or you do um, ski diving or anything, any kind of lifestyle that is risky, these things are factors that we put into consideration before deciding whether to accept your life insurance application or not. And if they are going to accept it, how much premium they are going to ask you to pay or how much risk they are portioned to each factor that you have given to them. So the younger you are, the better for you. If you take out the policy at a young age, you can get yourself covered for a lot more, for a lot less. You get a lot more covered for a lot less. So do not leave the life insurance thing and you say, oh, it's just something for the old people or people with families to, 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 to consider. No, the, the age is a very important factor. And then, you know, your uh, lifestyle, whether you smoke or you do not smoke, those things they take them into consideration. It doesn't mean you'll be rejected if you don't if you smoke. It simply means that the underwriting process that will be factored into underwriting process. If you are taking out a life insurance, disclosure is very very important. If there is a history of say diabetes or cancer or um, hepatitis B or any kind of illness in your family. If you ask that question and you are aware of it, answer the question, you know, with all to, uh, with all transparency and honesty, because it will be a critical factor when the time to pay claims comes. Do not withhold information at the insurance company or you try to play smart. If you try to play smart, there will be a way to find out when it's time to pay claims. You trying to play smart, you are just endangering your, your, your loved ones and you know limiting the chances of the claims being successful as and when the risk occurs. So disclosure is a very important part of life insurance arrangement. And then if you're taking out a life insurance arrangement, pure life insurance does not have an investment element. And it's far, far cheaper than the life insurance cover that has life that has investment elements. So pure life insurance cover is a lot cheap. You, you will not believe how much cover you can get for, for so little until you say, okay, can I get a quote? How much will it cost me to cover myself for, say, £200,000? Um, and this is how old I am and just for pure life insurance cover. It doesn't, it doesn't take you that much to really get this life insurance sorted. But then the peace of mind it gives you is enormous. If you've got bills to pay, if you've got family to look after, if you've got mortgages to pay, if you've got loans that you've taken out, life insurance cover is very, very important. That you take it and take it into serious consideration because of the safety and the protection of your family. All right? And then you read the documents and understand exactly what you're covered for and how much the coverage is and make sure that the coverage takes care of what you want it to take care of. All right, so um, I'm going to stop here today. I'm supposed, uh, like I said, there are three major areas, types of insurance I would like to cover, but I want to be taking them one at a time, so that I can give you the quality content and the quality explanation around each every one of them. I don't want to rush any of these things and then you know not do justice to it, but I want to make sure that whatever information I'm giving to you is quality over quantity, at least we are able to understand 
the difference between life insurance and life assurance, and then the pure life insurance itself, what it entails and what you need to do to get to, um, you know, to arrange it, and how you should approach it if you're a couple looking to arrange your life insurance um, cover for yourself. And like I said from the beginning, the, the explanation I've given here is not exhaustive. It doesn't mean that this is all you need to know about pure life insurance. There is a lot more you need to know about pure life insurance. But this one session is not enough for me to do justice to it. But then, if you have any more questions, or if you have any more um, inquiries you want to make around life insurance cover, how to go about it, and what more you need to know, or any specific questions to you, please feel free to come in contact with me on whatever platform you are listening to this. Ask me that question, and I'm going to, you know, in whatever comment section you see there, ask me the question there, and I'll do my best to answer that question. And then if we need to have a one-to-one -one chat, we'll have a one-to-one -one chat, and I will, you know, be able to sort those things down for you. But please, I need you to take action and begin to do something about this situation today, if you haven't. So thank you very much once again for being part of today's um, program, and thank you very much for watching. And um, next week, again, we're going to bring you um, the remaining parts of this particular series on life, on personal and family protection, and the remaining types of uh, life cover and the personal protection that we want to discuss. Once again, my name is Ikin Naomi, is the Director of Modesty Financial Consultants Limited, <coughs> based in um, Luton, the United Kingdom. And please, guys, please stay safe in this uh, coronavirus season. Stay healthy and always stay happy. Take care. Bye now.